So there we go. You broke. And like I was saying, here we are uh, uh, on to our main topic of the night, uh, Apache guacamole. Uh, thankfully, uh, Kyle was uh, willing to take the... Uh, the uh, brunt of uh, most of uh, talking about this and getting things to work and then I'll uh, show a little bit easier route on how to make it play nice in, inside Docker and then even uh, show a uh, Dockerized uh, host as well inside of Guacamole. All through the mir miracle of uh, Windows. <laughs> So I'll go ahead and pass off sharing here to Kyle and you can uh, get started on the first part of it here. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're coming through fine. Yeah. Should I hit the share screen? Yes. Okay, buttons. Buttons. Okay. Uh... You know, we'll figure out this remote meeting thing just in time to be able to be back in real person. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to do this. Okay. So this is like, I've just kept some notes. Can you see them? On my install here. I had to enable a few repos. I, first, this is on CentOS 8. I have my server running CentOS 8, and then it has a whole bunch of uh, Linux VMs on it, or well, there's a Windows VM on there too, but they have a bunch of Linux VMs on there that I run for different things. Um, but let's see, the first first thing you're gonna wanna do is add, let's see, add these repos down here. This is out of order. I was just kind of randomly taking notes. Um, okay. Okay, so on a CentOS 8 install, you're gonna wanna do uh Kyle, I think we may have lost you. It's looking like we lost him. Okay, well, I'll I'll plow ahead here uh, on his behalf, I guess. Everyone can still see the the desktop uh, share there, still. Oh, yes. Okay, so uh, I see what was left on Kyle's screen. Yep, I, I'm. Oh, ah. never mind. We just lost it. Okay, well, I'll go ahead with uh, my my part of it here, showing you the easier uh, cheat mode before uh, he uh, gets back on the call. Uh, so uh, what I ended up doing here, for, first a little bit about uh, guacamole and what exactly it is and why you'd want to use it. Uh, so one of the big problems with uh, remote desktop sort of uh, things are that you have to have this client installed and you have to worry about what port is where and how it's working and all of those really obnoxious uh, uh, things. And uh, guacamole will uh, sort of take some of the pain out of that in the, the fact that it is a sort of all-in-one HTML5 remote desktop uh, server. So it basically stands in front of you and remote desktop, VNC, and other things like SSH on your actual remote servers themselves. And uh, it will serve it up to you in a web browser. So if you want to, uh, all you have to do is just open up uh, your HTTPS uh, connection. And in theory, you have a relatively secure uh, connection because it's uh, all uh, SSL uh, encrypted uh, between uh, you and the guacamole server. So uh, 
what I ended up doing here was uh, the, the first thing I was doing is I downloaded from a uh, repo uh, this, uh, and I'll have links in my PDF there, this Docker Compose file for Apache Guacamole. And part of the reason why I did that is in the, the proper Docker way, they have the, the actual Guacamole server split out into three different images. You have the, the Guac D, the, the, the Guac Daemon, the Postgres server, which is storing all the database stuff, and then the, the Guacamole uh, server itself that talks to Guac D and the Postgres and all that and marries it all together. And then it's all completely wrapped in an Nginx uh, server that does all the SSL stuff. So uh, if we look here uh, at what's actually going on here, it sets up a network that's just a bridge network that everything's all operating on. This uh, guac D uh, mounts a couple uh, volumes, which is just the drive and uh, record and they're read and write. It will restart it no matter what happens. So if it dies, it brings it right back. Postgres, we're doing the same thing. There's a lot of arguments on the internet whether or not you should actually do a database inside of Docker. For the most part, YOLO, uh, the, the good news is we're not really stressing it all that much, so it's fine. If you notice, I have one of the best secure passwords here around. Uh, it's choose your own password here, uh, 1234. Let's see if I can make that any bigger. It doesn't look like that it didn't is. rock you? What's that? Uh, so I am using Postgres uh, 969 because I was having some issues getting this started. I eventually was able to figure it out. But if you notice uh, this uh, Docker uh, entry point, intro db.d, that is uh, a script that on the first init uh, will actually go through and set up a, a database for us with all the passwords, all the, the magic stuff there. And then for uh, guacamole here, uh, you can see that it uh, depends on those other two. And then we're passing in some uh, environmental variables and all that stuff. Uh, and then this basically just passes on to uh, TCP port 8080 for Nginx. And then Nginx has some SSL stuff that will make life nice for us. Uh, so the first initialize that you're going to want to do here. Uh, so the, that is not playing nice at all. here if I can't move this a little bit more and give us a full screen. There we go. So <clears throat> the uh, first thing that I did is uh, in order to get around the fact that all of these scripts are in bash, I uh, have a Docker image running with Docker and Docker running here. So in order to get it set up, let's see here. Basically, the, the startup script is prepare. And as you can see, it just uh, makes a couple directories and generates a new uh, RSA key, self-signed, and then also runs Guacamole's uh, Docker image uh, basically bringing out the uh, init db uh, script and uh, in Postgres mode and writes it to this uh, init SQL. Nothing all that big and amazing. The other nice thing it does have, I, I won't blow it away because I have it already set up, but if you run reset as a script, you can see that uh, basically all it's doing is it uh, will do, uh, 
it uh, changes uh, the, the init folder back to uh, being uh, writable and then uh, just rm-rfs, all of the stuff that it set up already. Nothing too big there, but it does blow away everything and make you have a bad day. So the, question. Yes. Um, you said you're putting Docker in Docker. Couldn't you put this in WSL? Uh, yes, you could. Uh, I was ha uh, having some uh, file permission issues. Uh, and it was uh, being kind of uh, obnoxious in the fact that it uh, wouldn't let me uh, actually, uh, so the, the biggest problem is uh, Docker on Windows apparently has some file permission issues that causes uh, Postgres to not want to run if you're uh, mounting the uh, data folders in. So what I ended up having to do is just do a uh, Docker and Docker run of uh, with dash privileged uh, mounting my local volume and then uh, mounting the, the Docker socket into the image so that Docker and Docker would actually work. Which is really cool because uh, by doing that, you can actually run Docker uh, from this command line. So if we go Docker, uh, let's see here. Uh, what would be a good one here? Uh, Docker. There you can see it's actually the uh, uh, stuff that's running on my uh, main system, not inside this container itself. So cool little Docker hacks. But so anyway, though, the fix that I ended up having to do was uh, inside this uh, init script folder. Uh, or no, sorry, was it in data? Yeah, so inside of data, I had to move everything in the data folder up or uh, create a new folder and then just sort of mount that one step down. And then the, the init scripts for, uh, yes. so everything here, the, this guacamole folder was uh, initially one folder up because uh, Postgres wants to be able to have permissions right on that folder. And uh, when you mount a yeah. folder from Windows into Docker, it uh, doesn't handle it very well, as you'd expect, uh, for permissions and read-write status and all that stuff. So uh, Docker, for, so Postgres just would uh, blow up. And if you remember right from my uh, uh, Docker Compose script here, I have the uh, restart always options enabled. Uh, so it just would blow up, restart, blow up, restart, blow up, etc. all ad nauseum. So to get, uh, let's go ahead and bring down here. Uh, so I had guacamole running. This is uh, Docker Compose. We could talk for hours on this alone. It's a real nice way to bring up and orchestrated multiple uh, images on one machine without all the weight of Kubernetes. Uh, e, of course, that, that has problems in the fact that if your, your host machine dies, well, then all of your Docker images do too. But if we look here, you can see we're just in uh, my Docker Compose master uh, branch here. And so if we bring uh, Docker Compose up, this is uh, starting it not in uh, daemon mode. So uh, mm -hmm. here we go, starting back up. And I have this up so that we can actually see the, the logs. Uh, you can do Docker Compose log and the machine name. It works just fine, but like I'm having some weird issues going on here. Go ahead and 
and bring it down and bring it back up. Apparently, uh, things didn't gracefully end last time. Because, of course, what would be a live demo if things went exactly the way you wanted it to? So bring it up one more time here. Okay, apparently we need to run... Move orphans to clean up... Uh, Poor orphans. Yeah, we, we never treat them right. Okay, there we aren't seeing all the, the errors anymore. The nice thing about this is you can see all of the stuff that's going on in all of these images. So you have Guac Compose throwing stuff all around. If you scrolled up high enough, you'd see uh, Postgres starting up and all those things. Uh, while we're at it, let's go ahead and start up a uh, VNC uh, uh, server as well so that we have something to actually look at here. And command-wise, what I'm doing is I'm uh, interactively running this, uh, forwarding my port 50, 5901 on and 6901. So if I wanted to look at the web uh, browser version of it, I could. And this is just the first VNC XFC uh, client that I found out on the internet on uh, the Docker hub. It's uh, sadly way out of date by about a year or so. If you were going to do this in earnest, you're, you're going to want to probably set up your own VNC server slash client and all that stuff and keep it up to date. But you know, for a demo, this is fine. I, I got tired of sitting there and waiting for uh, my Docker image to finish installing all of the X stuff that I needed. So th this is just an easy, quick way of getting around it here. And so if we come into guacamole here, our uh, password that we're going to want is, let's see, that's for VNC. Was the user on your computer called the underbar D? Uh, yes. That's funny. What is this supposed to mean? Uh, it's uh, short for, uh, because this is a old uh, Microsoft uh, uh, single sign-on, uh, it's uh, the dinner it keeps going oh, on. Okay. But... I was going to say, because <laughs> a username of the D, it's like giving her the D. Uh, no, no, <laughs> uh, that, that is definitively that is no not. related. <laughs> no. Uh, so here we are, we're supposed to be connecting, and uh, so apparently we skipped ahead a couple skips here. Okay, so here we are uh, at the, the main guacamole page here, not to steal too much from uh, Kyle's thunder here. Oh, did you get uh, VNC to work? Yes. Uh, yeah, I couldn't get VNC to work, but I could get SSH to work. And RDP so, won't work as well either. I went back and I combed through all the all the um, requirements and things I needed to rebuild the server component today, and I just didn't really find anything missing. So I'm not sure what it was about my libvnc and free RDP installs, but we, which is just illustrating the the beauty of uh, doing it via Docker, where we didn't have to do any real yeah. work. Uh, so anyway, though, here you can see just an XFCE uh, client here running. And uh, the, the cool thing about this is if you really want to get uh, Inception here, as soon as it starts up, it's uh, unfortunately my machine's a little taxed right now uh, trying to do everything that I'm doing here. That's the one thing I noticed is occasionally it would uh, brown out a little bit here uh, I think my uh, Docker uh, host is a little bit sorely underpowered. I need to give it some more uh, resources here. Uh, Kyle, I muted. Oh, no, it's not you who's uh, echoing. Uh, Don, maybe? 
Yeah, there we go. Don, I uh, muted you. We were getting a blowback from uh, me across your, your speaker there. So anyway, though, for uh, uh, Dockerception here, we have, uh, we're looking at a web browser inside of a web browser through uh, Guacamole. So that, that was my, my part of the, the presentation here. I can go ahead and uh, hand it back over here to Kyle to show how to actually install this if you're uh, a little bit more uh, liking uh, pain uh, and a lot of hard work because you worked on this the better part of the day, didn't you, uh, Kyle? Two days. Hmm. Two days at least because I was lazy and waited until the last minute, but... I, I admit this uh, took me the better part of last night to figure out, but most of it was Windows uh, file permissions. Yeah, I ran into a lot of that too. You can't you really use SC Linux on this. Well, you could in permissive mode, but no, actually, I think it gave me per problems even in permissive mode. So, with that demo, it's so the guacamole. Uh, so the guacamole host. server it, and the client you were going to and the one you're using for zoom are all on the same host yes so that's why they okay yeah yeah it, it's a little bit overtaxed and also the fact that all of the both the guacamole and uh the vnc uh, server are running inside of uh, Docker desktop in Windows. So it's on a uh, VM that's only been allocated, I think two of my CPUs as well. So it's uh, sorely under-resourced. But in theory, you could do the same thing with VNC or uh, RDP, or you could even install RDP uh, server on a uh, Linux host and do remote desktop there. Uh, the only thing that they don't do is X uh, Windows. And that's more because it's a very heavy, very complex, old crufty uh, communication protocol and they don't really want to deal with it. but there are rumors of a, a, a graphics uh, driver that would be able to connect an interface with it that would get the job done equivalency, equivalently, but it's in development right now and they really had no good indication of when that was going to happen. So I'll uh, mute here and let Kyle uh, take it away then. All right. How much can you see on my screen? Absolutely nothing right now. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Okay. Can you see just my notes screen now? Yes, that's correct. Okay. This will outline like the basic things. I kept this while I was making it. Um, first you want to add, this is on CentOS 8 by the way. Um, you need to install the CentOS Power Tools repo, which is easy as, uh, hold on, now I have a dog. Hey, oh, I got to change this real quick. Uh, I got to change the share. It may actually be helpful if you just share the, the whole desktop, if, uh, you, yeah, that would be uh, best. I don't see how it's, how it's letting me do that though. Zoom. I'm back on Zoom. Hmm. There's those. Sorry. So it might help if you stop sharing and then restart sharing over again. Trying to find where it all went. Oh, stop share. Okay, there's the button. I didn't know it was up there. Share screen. And then it gives. It doesn't let me share the whole screen. Um, it says it gives me like each of my little windows that's open. It doesn't have anything that'll let me do. 
Okay, well, just go ahead and share the next thing you wanted to show then. Um, now I want to go to this. Yeah, this thing isn't working. Let me just open a terminal. Okay, terminal. See the terminal? Yes. Okay. So, uh, this is where I started. I went and opt. I had to do, um, I had to install Apache Maven. So I did everything from uh, tarballs. I did Apache Maven. I also did Tomcat. Uh, free RDP. There's a guacamole client and a server part, libtelnet, and libvnc server, and then all my packages or all the things I had to download. But first I installed Maven, Apache Maven. There's a lot of, I just followed the instructions for it. It was pretty easy. All I had to do was uh, unpack it and then um, it was pretty much unpack and then just run as long as everything was on the right right path. Um, so I added a lot of et slash etc slash profile dot d uh, shell files that would change the path in different ways by adding different uh, different bin directories in there. Um, there's Apache Maven. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then the ones I had trouble with are free RDP and libvnc server. Eventually I just installed a libvnc server plugin. Uh, if you do these are all the packages you need to install. Once you get your, these are all the packages you need to install once you get your, uh, sorry, the repositories configured. And did, were you guys able to see those repositories? CentOS, Power Tools repo. Well, I guess then Maven and yes. OpenJDK. So yep. I used, I didn't try OpenJDK. So but then you just install that big line of these, I summed it down for you or summed it up for you and I went through and picked out every package that I installed that I needed to install all of those basically. Uh, I followed this page a lot. Can you see the, my other screen yet? The no. Screen? Okay, let me get back to this. So just as a question, uh, it's looking like uh, there should be a guac uh, 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 DNF uh, package, set of packages. Uh, is there a reason you uh, compiled from scratch? No, I just did it from scratch for this. Okay. Just to uh, how hard it was. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd recommend uh, uh, leveraging the uh, package manager next time maybe. Yeah, it package makes life so much easier. easier. Yeah, I tried to stick to the package manager, but a lot of the stuff needed to be built, which is why probably I don't have the VNC portion working. But either way, I got those packages installed. Um, so the guacamole server makes guac D which is the server component. Uh, and it's the component that probably does the VNC and the SSH and all that. It's a standard make or dot slash configure make make install. Um, let's see, was there any things I had troubled in there? I do have some links for installing guacamole and configuring guacamole. 
that were of a lot of help. Overall, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way unless you can get pre-made packages because <laughs> it was really hard to get all this done. Oh, here's, you also need an FFMPEG. You also need F FFMPEG in order to uh, get this working. Those are two, those are two things that I needed to find. Uh, RPM, RPM package. And FFMPEG was just in standard repos um, it should have been in one of those repos that I mentioned above, but, okay, I gotta keep, I gotta stop sharing and then keep sharing to switch screens. I don't know why mine is doing this. Okay, so, then I installed Tomcat. I also did that from source two and it's just another make or there's c make there's make and maven to make you need three build systems to make all these packages uh, once i got maven user share tomcat okay once i got tomcat up and going you have to put the war file which is it's pretty easy actually you just install tomcat and then uh drop it in web apps oh. yeah that's just the uh, compiled uh, java uh jar package which one is yeah, the uh, war, uh, war is just a uh, Java uh, package for web uh, bundled all together for the and web. You're server. right. It was just the .war file I drag and drop. Then when I restarted it, I could go to. Um, then I could go into guacamole dash one dot one dot oh wait yeah that's the one I created so then. I had to open port 8080 because that's what Tomcat was using. And if I went to that IP address in my web browser and port 8080 uh, slash guacamole, it would pull up that familiar screen, which I'll show you here. Uh, zoom. There, now you can see my web browser. Okay, web browser. Here's these sites that were, were a lot of help of help to me. Configuring guacamole and um, this website by Deviant Engineer was very helpful as well. Okay, but then Apache guacamole, you have to specify user credentials and things in the etc guacamole directory. You get things like oh, sorry go back to the terminal okay so you have guacamole.properties logback.xml and user mapping.xml guacamole is just guacamole.properties is just specifying the host name and the port that it's uh that's the front end is connecting to Glock D, which is port 4822. And then logback can be used for logging. Right now, I, it's just a piece of code you have to copy paste to enable debug logs, um, but you get it from the, the manual. I don't, it's kind of, it's an actual little piece of configuration you have to copy paste. I don't know how to create it or anything. They just say, put this there, and then it'll debug. So I just delete it if I don't want it. Then I go user mapping is where you put the users and also all of their connections. You can have, how I set it up here is a user with username A and the password is A. Because <laughs> this, 
UI is on an internal network, so it's good. Then I got a connection name, which can be arbitrary. Protocol SSH, it just SSHs to, from a web browser, it SSHs to a server through the Wagok D component. Then you got your host name, localhost. I also have another connection, which I have set up to go to a Windows 10 box. I installed Type VNC on it, but I can't get it to work yet. It just it times out when connecting to Guac D. So I'm thinking that's why I was thinking that maybe Guac D had uh, some missing dependencies, because in the documentation for Guac D it says only if you want these features do you include these libraries. So I'm thinking I just got the wrong one or something. But you configure your connections and everything there. And your users, it's all in the Apache Guacamole uh, log or documentation. That's really helpful. So then I'll go back to the web browser now. So at least on my instance, I did notice that if you're the admin user of Guac when you log into it, it will uh, let you set that up from the, the web browser as well. This one didn't have that. So I just did A and A, and it shows, can you see the web browser? All it shows yes. is my recent connections here, which is I did SSH localhost, but then, so I'll show you that one first. See, it connects automatically. See, and it, you get a lot of information out of it, and you can scroll back as much as you want. It's helpful. Um, it can be kind of wonky with like clear and reset. At least I've had issues from it. That nah, one's running pretty good this time. Okay, so I'll exit out of that one. So one of the real nice uses of this is if you happen to be at a corporate site that uh, starts asking questions, if you start uh, having SSH traffic on your uh, from your work computer or something yeah. like that. I'm just visiting a website. <laughs> and I'll try going to the VNC Win 10 and you can see what happens. Connected to guacamole, waiting for a response. That kind of stops there. And yeah, so I had problems with that. Uh, there was a password set on my VNC uh, client, and I had to get that correct. Oh, OK. Yeah, the, this one, I didn't think I, I didn't think I set up that at all. But maybe that's the whole thing. Maybe it does have a password on it. I guess I should look at that next. But this is what it does. User share, Tomcat, um, guacamole, logs, oops, logs, Catalina, ouch. And that was the similar stuff that you saw uh, being outputted to my uh, uh, directory just because it was uh, in uh, the uh, interactive mode of uh, uh, Docker, uh, the way that I had it set up. Yeah. Now I wonder if it is just a password I have to set somewhere. Well, here, I can uh, take back over and show you uh, the user interface version of yeah, it. That's it's cool. rather handy. Uh, and that's pretty much my presentation, too. OK, yeah. So what I, I can show here is if you go up into this uh, right-hand corner here, you can yeah. see I'm logged in as Guac Admin. And if you go to Settings, this is where you can see oh, all of the active settings of your uh, all the clients that are connected. Right yeah, now, there's nobody. I guess I didn't History. remember if there was a connections, a way to specify those or not. Yep. So here you can see all of the different times that I connected in and how uh, rather flaky things were. Yeah. Users, you can create a new user here. 
and uh, set it up so that, and this is the user that is set up to log into Guacamole, not necessarily the user that's set up to log into the clients. So like say if I wanted to enable Foo for my new user, the, the uh, one that I just had, uh, user new user doesn't necessarily have to know what the password was to uh, the the foo box. It comes along for free. That's cool. And long as you uh, don't have the permissions uh, set up here, the user can't do anything like administer or change passwords or anything like that. Yeah. And you can even uh, set it up so, like, say if it's a new uh, intern that's coming, you know, they're only going to be here for six months. Well, they can only uh, log in after, say, the 1st of July, and we'll take it back uh, from them in September when they go back to school or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, scrolling up here. Well, I guess I have to go back a uh, page here. So groups, you could create groups and have uh, permissions set around groups. So like say you have an admin group and if a user isn't part of the admin group, they don't have the administer systems checked or stuff like that. Uh, the, the part that I was talking about here, if you look, the, this is where you can edit how you have it set up. So here is uh, my name of Foo. It's located in the root folder because that's all we have right now. I just checked and I don't have any of that in mine. You probably don't have Privs as admin then. Uh, so you yeah, can set that. up to connect into a Kubernetes uh, cluster, RDP, SSH, Telnet, or VNC. Uh, for this, you could limit how many people can connect to it at once. So say you, you have a license on your term server that you can only have 100 people connected to it. You can enforce that in Guacamole so it just won't let you do it otherwise. Uh, and you can even restrict it so that you can stop Kyle from hogging all the logins. I like the login. Uh, you can set up balancing between different servers. So like say if you have five servers and you want to spread the, the load evenly, you can go ahead and do that. This is where you can set up the proxy to connect to another Guac D uh, daemon. Uh, here's where you're connecting in. The, this is where my VNC server is at 10.0066 and 1591, uh, here's my super secret password. And then you can do stuff like read only. I don't know why you'd wanna swap red and blue components, but you can. And uh, all sorts of other uh, controls like that, as well as how you're tunneling it, if you're recording things, passing audio along to an audio server, all sorts of stuff like that, as well as you have some usage of what user and when did they log into the machine and stuff like that. And if we go back, the only other thing that we have here is uh, preferences where you can change self-service, change your own password, set what language you want to be in. So if you want to be in uh, Italiano, we, we can do Italiano. And we're in, of course, Chicago uh, in the Americas here for time zone. And you can control what the how the mouse is emulated because one of the, this uh, helps handle uh, like say if you're doing uh, touch screen sort of stuff. But one of the, the more helpful things was if you look at uh, Guacamole has a great uh, documentation page of how to handle everything that could possibly go wrong. And trust me, there's a lot that can go wrong. Uh, but the, the only other thing that I was looking here Uh, is I have some uh, documentation here. This is where the, this uh, page is where I got my uh, Docker Compose file from and the uh, headless VNC container. Uh, if you need to get my links, I can, I can send them to you. Or yep, you, yeah, you can go ahead and send that and we'll uh, uh, paste it into the, the slides before they get sent out. Okay. But uh, yeah, so anyway though, uh, that, that was the, the brunt of my, uh, my part of the presentation here. So can and we I, assume this adds quite a bit of 
latency or lag? So I didn't notice a great deal of latency. Uh, of course, I, I'm connected to a remote uh, or a, a local uh, network uh, connection here. So that that kind of decreases it. It, I mean, the the whole standard of uh, VNC, you're you're lobbing, uh, moving JPEGs across a wire, basically. So it, it uh, degrades fairly well but it just depends on how bad your connection is. Yeah, I don't mean VNC on its own. The fact that you're, you're sort of bouncing, but you're doing that through a number of software layers there. Yeah, they, there's enough uh, screen buffering going on that it really didn't have much of a lag at all from what I, I was seeing here, because if we pull it up here, soon as it connects. I mean, you, you can see the, the mouse is keeping right up with it. And if we go here to terminal, as soon as it loads up, I mean, it, it, it's keeping up quite, quite well, really. So, I mean, it, it's about as bad as VNC itself is which VNC isn't all that great anyway. Uh, they, there are some uh, other things that work a little better. Uh, remote desktop uh, RDP is a bit better of a standard than- uh, it supports RDP too, right? Yes, it supports RDP as well, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't want- three, VNC, RDP, and SSH. Uh, so if you look uh, back here, I'll, I'll jump back to that admin page. Uh, this install of it supports multiple different uh, standards. So we've got uh, Kubernetes, RDP, SSH, Telnet, and VNC. So you, you can do uh, uh, the Kubernetes kubectl uh, stuff as well, basically and it connects onto a uh, Kubernetes uh, node, I, I'm yeah. guessing here. What is or, that like? Is that like SSH in? Yeah. Be, Kubernetes? Yeah, it basically it's leveraging the, the Kubernetes infrastructure to make that happen. Um, so it's like- um, Sort it, of like a D bus just for Kubernetes? Yeah, it's sort of like how when you use SSH, you can, or uh, when you use Docker, you can uh, attach to a running session and you're not SSH, you're, you're going through the Docker infrastructure to look at it, even if it's not running locally on your machine. Um, I'm looking for more and I'm not seeing it. I mean, there are yeah, that one was one that wasn't really well uh, documented. There, but here you there's can see Spice, you, there's NX, um, a couple more. Yeah, NX, uh, they, they actually have an FAQ on the uh, uh, Guacamole page, and they say that X or NX is basically a uh, modified version of X client to be more friendly to send across the wire. And uh, their big complaint about it is at least the latest version of NX is uh, proprietary. So if you really want to write your own uh, implementation of it for uh, Guacamole and contribute it back up, feel free. But otherwise uh, they, they said the heck with you. Right, I mean, that's probably the case with most of them. That, hey, yeah. we only have so much time. Patch is welcome. Yep. Um, we, which is always fun submitting a uh, uh, trouble ticket to an Apache level uh, project. I, I actually got to do that uh, last uh, Friday. Uh, found a bug in uh, uh, Apache Thrift, which is a uh, RPC uh, communication protocol. And uh, it's .NET library that comes along with it. Uh, it had a bug in it. They haven't uh, actually commented or done anything with my bug report yet, but by golly, it's filed, and I feel a lot better. 
Good. I've done that before. <laughs> Is my but, thing on still? Yes, you're you're still sharing. Okay. But you're These still sharing feet. your webcam at least. These are baby feet. <laughs> But, oh, hiccups are the worst. Uh, but uh, thank you to Lee, uh, who's uh, volunteered to present uh, next month on uh, Tor uh, and Onion uh, routing sort of stuff, since it's been a couple years since we last uh, presented. If uh, memory serves me right on that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I had done that a couple of years ago. I'll go through it updated for you guys. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I know I uh, played with one that was uh, actually uh, using a Raspberry Pi as a jump server on my local network uh, using Tor. Mm -hmm. And it, it worked great, uh, relatively speaking, uh, except for the fact that it's absolutely terribly high latency. As one would expect, yeah, you're, bouncing you're around the world. Encryption on it. First, personally, my favorite application for a Pi is in a is in a server rack for name servers and mail servers and stuff like that. Yep, the the stuff that a little bit of latency won't uh, kill you on. Yep. Although I found out it's kind of hard to run. Um, uh, uh, about, uh, Spam assassin. Mm, I can see that. So I had to set up a central D.